Welcome back. It's The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to go through the pages this morning, bring you great perspective, analysis with our guests. But we'll start off with the leadership newspaper and uh, take you through all the papers that's been made available by our paper vendor. Well, like I mentioned on the leadership this morning, very bold, is you must reject candidates who did not participate in primaries. That's what the leadership is saying. Sans CSOs to INEC. You must reject candidate who did not participate in primaries. The big question would be, should we state the obvious? I mean, it's, if you did not participate in the primaries, do you need a reminder not to have them on board? But that's what it is. INEC cannot promote impunity, illegality. That's what the CS, uh, civil society organizations quoted to say. Case of Lawan Akpabio, their violation of electoral of electoral act, this is what Sands are quoted to say. But China insists on legal action over Yobe North APC sanitary ticket. I mean, you're talking about that of, uh, you know, the Senate president, Ahmed Lawan. He lost and he wasn't part of the primaries for that position. But let's see how all of that pans out. Another writer underneath says, Akpabio name will be on the ballot. Hmm. According to the aide, no reports suggest names were forwarded to us. INEC is quoted on that. And Nigerians are saying INEC needs to keep up with its energy. ESWAP kills six commuters, injures two in fresh Borno attack. Very sad headline. Terrorists kill three worshippers, abduct 46 in Kaduna. Another sad one there. Kwankoso will not be OB's running mate. NNPP is quoted, uh, but, but there's a possibility of a merger. Not necessarily meaning that you would probably have, um, you know, Kwankoso becoming a running mate. But let's see how all of this unfolds as we get close to 2023. Healthcare patients bear brunt of outage and high diesel costs. This is according to investigation. Uh, you're looking at the healthcare uh, sector in Nigeria. Court holds action on e custom concession project. And Ted Fon to release 15 billion naira for national library projects. <laughs> I know a certain state where you know, the library is nothing to write home about with two professors in that particular state. Very sad. And, and I, I don't even know what the culture of the library is right now in our country. 18 die in Bida minor road crash. That's what you find. Ekiti poll after landslide. Oyibanji promises to work for Ekiti people. Now you have uh, all of the details that you need. The registered voters, you have uh, 989,222 Accredited voters, 363,438, 351, 865 valid votes and rejected vote, 8,888, 360,753 vote cast and 36.74% percentage of uh, turnout. How would you actually put that out? Uh, you also find, uh, you know, uh, those who top three contenders, you have the uh, the SDP, the PDP, and the APC right there. But that's it on the leadership. Let's move away from the leadership. Take a quick look at the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. On the Daily Independent forex scarcity, untamed inflation puts Nigeria's economy at risk. Now, you also have the World Bank saying that you are going to have a lot of Nigerians uh, in poverty in 2022, about 15 billion, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's what you find. And all the quotas are saying the projection for inflation by the World Bank, Niger has exceeded at the time we're looking at 15 point, but right now we're looking at 17.71%. That's a lot to grapple with. Ekiti Paul Sarab gives INEX seven day ultimatum to prosecute vote buyers. Mm. 18 persons feared dead in Niger auto crash. NYC member five orders die in Bielsa boat mishap. That's a lot of bad news. And why Atiku dumped WK despite PDP 
recommendation. Okowa and I are incurable optimists in Niger's future. Uh, this is what, you know, the flag bearer, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar is quoted to say. Terrorists kill three worshippers, abduct many in Kaduna Church. O'Neill rejects AKT Guba polls result as PDP Kolawale concedes defeats by uh, congratulating. AKT Guba elections, Bohara Tunubu Lawan Songwolu. APC congratulates Oyebanji. Uh, that's also another rider or caption you find this morning on the Daily Independent. Tunubu returns to Lagos amid jubilation by party supporters and VAT. Miscellaneous charges crippling airlines operation. Abgar national women leader joins Labour Party. Oh, well, it's, it's not surprising because we see a lot uh, as we move closer to 2023. Now, on the Nation newspaper, huge crowd gives Tunubu a rousing welcome to Lagos. Uzodima Ganduje Buni Shatima orders on trip with APC candidate, ex uh, Lagos governor, visit Oba. Uh, find out which of the Obas we're talking about now. Terrorists kill three in attack on two churches. Bandits kill three in Imo. 13 mourners abducted in Ondo, I beg your pardon, Edo State. Rivers government files charges against Amechi others. Ripples over Okowa's nomination widen in PDP. And Oyebanji promises new dawn in Ekiti. You find different riders, but for the want of time, we just need to move away and quickly look at the Punch newspaper. On the Punch newspaper, Ekiti governorship elections, APC, PDP clash over vote buying, Onis Kam Mo's legal action. PDP came distant third, desperate to bring back Renew's regime, says APC. APC is what? Electorate find it difficult to make national, rational decision. That's what the PDP is quoted to say. Elections fraught with violence. We will challenge it at tribunal. SDP coalition agent is quoted. The former governor of Lagos said Tunubu returns to Lagos. Six massive local government votes in hoodlums attack the convoy. Uh, some people say that that's actually staged to attract sympathy. Debt servicing doubles hits 896 billion naira in three months, according to the DMO. Six IOCs remit unpaid 386.4 billion naira proceeds this month, according to the NNPC. And foreign airline kicks as federal government blocks $450 million ticket revenue. People are tired of Lawan. Let him go and rest. <laughs> you find out uh, the China Yobe position on that. And stock investors loss, $767 billion in one week. Federal government, World Bank, AFD to fix 53,730 kilometers rural roads with $575 million. It feels like we're talking statistics and figures this morning. But just before we move away from the punch, you find Lagos power firms, technician falls from electricity poor and dies. Really sad. Another one says, Ogun gunmen take cigarettes, foodstuffs, free abducted church leaders. Really. Lagos orders record 36,482 tuberculosis cases in two years. And another one says, Benway Valley becomes gunman's haven, 92 to resident kills in three months. Very sad and unfortunate. Kidnappers demand 150 million naira for exchange of the NFF officers abducted after a Abuja wedding. And jam registrar kids, politicians buying 100 naira million nomination farms. Uh, this is the headlines you find this morning on the Punch newspaper. It's time for us to have Okpuna Bon Katari, a public affairs analyst, who joins the conversation this morning. Okpuna Bon Katari, it's good to have you join us this morning via phone. Thank you so much. I hope you had a great week and... Yes, good morning, Messi. I, I, I'm not too sure of a great week. 
All so right. Country like Nigeria, but we give up, we give up the glory. All right, then let's start off with the leadership newspaper. On the leadership, you have the Sands and the CSO saying to INEC, uh, the must reject candidate who did not participate in the primaries. Now, one case that is very, uh, very popular or seem to be making the rounds on our papers is the case of the Yoban North, where you have uh, the Senate president and uh, Machina on that particular one. Well, first of all, uh, there's a lot of all back. But we can hear you clearly, Okunabong Kataria. Just go okay. ahead with your thoughts. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the, the law is clear on the issue of substitution. The person, the candidate, must voluntarily write to the party and say will be transmitted to INEC. Or in the case of death, the party will still write to INEC. And you have to conduct press elections. A situation where uh, the Lawa and the Senate president felt he could go for the presidency of the country and at the same time have somebody to secure the senatorial ticket uh, is wrong. I think we've gone past that stage in politics. If, and it is also mandatory uh, yeah, for you to participate in uh, primaries that will be supervised by uh, INEC. And so if you never did, how come did you get the votes? I mean, it's simple logic. How did you get the votes that made you a candidate? So if you never participated in the primary, not just participation in the primary, primary recognized by INEC, you are not a candidate. Even if the party declares you one, you are not. Not to talk of a situation where the party has declared somebody else as a candidate and you want to use your fusion, your, your, your office, to steal, that is called stealing, to steal that ticket from that candidate. And I'm very happy that the person in, in, involved has sworn to resort to court should INEC recognize this other person. And it is sad that the name of Lawa, that the city president, is the one on INEC's brother. So I'll urge the uh, uh, candidate involved to go to court and let the court decide it. All right. Um, so you looking at the leadership newspaper this morning, you also find, I mean, the, the, the fact that um, over the weekend, you have a mass burial for the OWA um, victims, I mean, those who were massacred. Now, terrorists killed three worshippers, abduct 46 in Kaduna, that's one. Another says the ESOP killed six commuters, injured two in fresh Borno attack. What's really going on with security? The, the big question is, is it that we're helpless? What exactly is going on? Can we not? Don't we have what it takes to address, you know, the security issues? Those who are committing this crime every other time. Are we helpless as a country? We've been discussing this issue. You know, it, it's now uh, it's a broken record, so to speak. On daily basis, we are kidnapping killing, and what have you. You know, it's, we, we are almost in a lawless society if we are not there already. We have a government that is insensitive, a government that has not spoken, a government that is rudderless. And it's either the government, I can't say this, it's either the government is complicit, which is my certain conviction, or the situation has overwhelmed this government. But I'll ask for the former. The government is complicit. I you know the last time on this very station, I had to bolster my fashion. I talked to the former uh, IV of police. I talked to the former service chiefs, who are now ambassadors. I thought of uh, the issue of uh, money that were released to 
to the service chief and nothing nothing was brought to combat this this madness. So I see a government chair inertia on the part of the government to address <laughs> excuse me, sincerely these issues. That's my take on it. I don't forget that there were suggestions that if the government is at sea as to how to address this issue, then let us invoke the assistance of the US, the, uh, Israel, and some other countries that have the know-how. And the government said no. With a very reasonable, ridiculous excuse of sovereignty. Well, how does that impact on your sovereignty? Don't you buy equipment from them? And funny enough, these countries know exactly what is happening. They are just waiting for you to call on them. They know. They know where the terror is at because they have the equipment. They have what it takes. Look at it, an American was kidnapped. What happened? Within a minute hours, they came rescued it. Out of shame, Lai Mohammed came on air to say they were aware of that operation when they were not aware of that operation. When America is good at Israel, 19 minutes at NTV, Israel was taken on our Is this Nigeria? When Amor, if I was asking you, just like how today we did go, he said he knew when the Nigerians knew when the Americans came in, they took permission. That's a lie. That's a lie. So we need these people. There is no shame about it. It's a matter. Look at Ukraine today. It's coming up. Uh, uh, the, the United Nations assistance. It's a normal thing. If these people have a world view, swallow your pride and invoke the assistance of countries that have the expertise that will know how to address this. Otherwise, I tell you, my dear, <laughs> the country is either slowly to rendezvous with anarchy. And we will not have any country after now to talk of a sovereign thing. So let us follow our pride and invite those that will contain the situation. Well, some people who have actually said that uh, they're very disappointed with the APC government, especially where this government came on the heels that uh, we will take care of the issue of security in 2015. And this is what's going on. Away from that, um, let's look at the Daily Independent newspaper. Forex scarcity, untamed inflation puts Nigeria's economy at risk. Now, that's what the Daily Independent is saying. The World Bank has also said that the inflation shock is, uh, has a tendency or is going to push Nigerians, 15 million of them, into poverty between 2020 and 2022. I mean, we're looking at 2022 right now. The word there is untamed inflation. And we're talking about scarcity of foreign exchange. Well, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, you know, we run a money economy. And so once the oil is affected, the oil supply is affected, the chart chain is affected, it affects the economy. That is one. Number two, we, we are now in the political season. These days, our politicians don't bribe anymore with Naira. That is almost as useless as a tissue paper. They use the dollar. I mean, here yeah, as much as $30,000, $40,000 per delegate. Times the number of delegates in the country. That, of course, will stimulate inflation in the country. What is inflation? Too much money for shrimp, sky, and little food. It's as simple as that. So, and what do you have now? A 45 in sky rocket. So that is responsible for inflation in the country. Basically, we are talking of the oil market that has been affected, the oil price, and now it's been tested by politicians that drive their way through the process with dollars. Open up one, Kataria. I mean, uh, you say we run a money economy, and that's very true. But for how long 
do we need to continue in this particular cycle? Don't we understand that we run a money economy? Experts have been planning for diversification of the economy. When Nigeria had the first university, when Nigeria's economy was booming, they, we, we, we relied so much on Oko and Grana. And we did a lot the region. There was competition, healthy competition. We did a lot the region with nothing from Coco and Grana. But because we had leaders, when the military came in, we now had leaders with limited knowledge, intelligence. And so with the discovery of oil and the working of oil in the international market, the acceptance of oil in the international market, agriculture was abandoned. What of Israel? Israel survived on agriculture. And our leaders don't believe, easy money, that there is no need. Let us abandon the agriculture. We have oil. Lack of focus. And that is what has led us to where we are today. We don't still have the agric economy and the oil economy. I didn't even doubt that to fight because we live in a country that is blessed with human and natural resources in abundance. So it all boils down to leadership, poor leadership, poor leadership. You remember we had once had a president or head of state who said the problem with Nigeria is not the money, but how to spend the money. How can a man say that? How can a money, how can money be too much for a country? It's not possible, which means your knowledge is limited. Look at Dubai today. What are we talking about? Yesterday, these were companies that were coming to Nigeria for assistance. But today, we rush to Dubai for everything. On daily basis, if you go to Dubai in two years, you, uh, if you went to Dubai in two years, and you went there last year, you, there was a difference. If you go there this year, there is a difference. That is development. They know what to do with the money. But we had a head of state who said the problem with Nigeria is how to spend the money. That's the that the problem, you know, the, it has always been with leadership. And that is why we are where we are today. But it is not too late. So, so if we diversify our economy. So, so and we have good leadership. I mean not leaders that will freeze our trade to drive. Open up good I mean these leaders will not fall from the sky or will not fall from heaven. So, so the problem is with the leadership that we have over time, because we, we seem to not lead, from what you're saying, it's not that we're not in the know of, ex, of what is going on with us as a country. You have mentioned that uh, we're running a mono economy. And so we probably do not do so much. Now, you have also mentioned the issue of leadership as a problem that's not providing direction. And... So who then is responsible for the kind of leadership that we're having and that up until this moment, we have not been able to get it right? Diversify the economy, if that's the issue. We constantly yes. have talked about it from, other t from the time of independence up until now. You want to look at the development plan, 1966 or thereabout, till this moment. It was always hinged on borrowing, dependent on external funds to source, you know, or to fund the plan. And how do you borrow, you know, to fund a plan? That's, it, yeah, it's not, it's not to do with what I let me that shit, you know. So who's or responsible you know, for the, the who's responsible for the kind of leadership that we have? Who's responsible? Now, that's what I'm saying. I, I answered that when I said the electorate, Nigeria, you get the leadership you deserve. How so? Now we are talking of the electorate who collected money. Although most of us faulted that system because you disenfranchised Nigerians. You stole their right of choosing who will emerge as a candidate. It was quite easy. The direct finance would have been a lot better. No matter how cumbersome, it would have been a lot better. Now, having said this, they, they, they bribe you, you collect this money just that will satisfy your needs just for a very brief period and for the rest of the eight years 
you are in poverty, you are in failure. So that is where the awareness comes in. That is why we tell Nigeria, collect this money, the money is here, but vote your conscience. Let's say, for example, now we have a P2B. We all know the qualities of P2B. I'm not campaigning for him because, in all fairness, I is my candidate. So let the other say he's campaigning. He's not my candidate. But you have someone like a P2B. We all know the qualities of P2B. If you have to vote, why not vote for P2B, for example? You have a man like Anatiku. As a vice president, you saw the economic policies and so on. If you know you are convinced that a man like Anatiku can deliver, why not vote for Anatiku? That's why I keep telling Nigeria, forget about the basic philosophy of I am a PDP man, I must vote for a PDP man. I am an APC APT, man. No. I open a vote Chris and Nico's area. My vote for YPP by family will vote for APC for uh, House of Rights. PDP for governorship, WWW, <coughs> excuse me, for president, that is the way I will vote. Not a lot satellite. The choice of my area will depend on that candidate. It's there. That will determine who I will cast my vote for. I don't give a damn about your party. Because at the end of the day, it is when the, the chips are down, we all are going to suffer for our own choices, or we are going to enjoy the beneficiaries of our sagacity, political sagacity. So, my dear, I am not interested in parties, and I urge Nigerians to also throw the same line and abandon this imbecilist policy if we need to get it right in this country. Because we know that we have leaders who can, can get it right. All right, um, moving away from that, um, looking at the punch now, it talks about the AKT governorship elections. Uh, the APC and the PDP clash over vote buying, Onis Kamal's legal action. I mean, vote buying is, uh, uh, we actually saw that, not having to wait for any sort of investigation. We could see individuals who were very proud of saying that they sold their votes, and of course, they got the change that they got. But, but what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, the fact that you have the SDP not agreeing to this and saying that they are going to pursue a legal action. Well, there's, I mean, it is, it is within their rights. Uh, if they believe that there is an infraction, why not you, you subject it to the clinical prognosis of the legal lab, and there has to be a judicial pronouncement on that. And uh, like you said, some people vaunted that they sold their votes. Now, the truth is, when you talk of rectitude, there is a thin line between rectitude and hunger. It is quite difficult to talk, to talk of rectitude, to preach rectitude to a poor man whose son is on the sick bed, who is finding it difficult to feed, who cannot afford his transport fare to the next uh, head? And you come and talk of refugees. May I do that the economy was, <laughs> excuse me, uh, the resources were squandered by the same leader. So, as far as these people are concerned, this is just an opportunity for them to take what they can take. Because the next four years, even if they vote for you genuinely, they will not see the dividends of that democracy. These are some of the reasons. But then we have to educate them. If PDP is alleging fraud, electoral fraud, no problem, you go to court and the court will decide. These things will also further if they have evidentiary proof. And the judgment will further enrich our jurisprudence. So I have never been advised to anybody going to court on any issue. The more you go to court, the better for Nigerians, because the more decided cases you are going to have, the more our jurisprudence will be enriched. So anybody who wants to go to court should go to court, if you have enough proof. But what I'm against is wasting the time of the court, going to court for going to court reasons without any justification. It must be justiciable. Then I don't have a problem with that. 
Now, but um, some people are saying that INEC should understand what is obtainable here, uh, especially when you're talking about the Electoral Acts uh, 2022. That should INEC go ahead, you know, declaring a result or a winner, when it could outrightly be seen, especially when you also could see officials of the EFCC around and during the, uh, you know, the um, election ground making arrests. Uh, some people are saying that INEC should have uh, done something differently other than what they have done. Well, well I, it is within the virus, within the part of INEC to show you. But again, INEC might be seen it from a different perspective. The only advice I will have for INEC is that should the court confirm in this uh, pronouncement that there was an infraction. And I like went ahead to declare somebody that has not declared a candidate, a, a winner, then the image of I like is at stake. However, having said this, that is why you have the courts for resolution of disputes. So I don't have a problem with I like some uh, his eyes away from the for alleged infraction, no problem, you have the court. And I will go have the final say on that matter. Yes, the electoral has empowered it to either declare uh, an election uh, inconclusive in court or to outright, outrightly convert, cancel it, or to declare a winner. It is within I, the, the policy of INEC to so do and to also decide which to do. You have the cost, my dear. Let's go to court and sort it out. Hmm. Now let's get back again to the Daily Independent. Another one talks about uh, why Atiku dumped WK despite PDP recommendation. I mean, a lot of persons would think that WK would have been the choice for the PDP, especially um, where you have a uh, person saying he has been very, very um, instrumental to the development and sustenance of the party as it is today. Let me tell you the truth, my dear. Let us not be sentimental on issues. Let us address them the way they are. It will be extremely difficult for Atiku, or it would have been extremely difficult for Atiku to have chosen a PK as his running mate. Now, let's give a penetrating talk to some of the issues I'm going to raise. One, you have a father that go go, a strong supporter of Atiku that is in detention today and is facing all kinds of short term charges. We all know that father from the world said he was Atiku. And as far as Atiku is concerned, whether he says it out or not, father is suffering because of it. That is number one. Because those charges are short term charges. Number two, you have a man who said the PDP should not consider founding father, but rather people that have sustained the party, and not people that left the party, went to APC, failed the election, and got back to PDP. Of course, that was an innuendo. innuendo. He was referring to Atiku. That is number two. <laughs> Number three, you said, oh, all your dead body, are you going to be a vice president? You are going for the presidency and you are going to win it. That smack of brutal ambition. And how will you want such a person to be your vice? Number four, you are at loggerheads with all your brother governors. All of them. Then you see that you are abusing their fathers. You are abusing their mothers, you are abusing their wives, you are abusing their respect, you are abusing every day. These people have a say in who becomes the vice president of the country. Even if they are not members of that committee, 
they have a direct line to Mr. Tlachiku. They will call him to say, please, even if we are not going to get it, don't give it to that man. It's not presidential enough. These are some of the issues. You go to church, you say, tell them that fire you, fire your papa. Which president you want to have such a person as a vice? So you take a lot of issues under government in the choice of the country. Somebody that has near impeccable quality of public personnel. There is no perfect person, but near impeccable. Nobody can do somebody that is tax it on. Open a bank, Ataria. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, but quickly, uh, in just a, a second or two or thereabout, because we're being prompted to uh, move away for the want of time. Now, on, uh, on the leadership, it talks about Kwanko So will not be OB's running mate. This is according to the NNPP. What do you think of this, you know, bromance or romance, whatever it is you want to call it, uh, with the Labour Party and the NNPP. Do you see um, a merger coming through just as in 2015? The, uh, the Labour Party oh, and... My dear. Oh, sorry, my dear. Yes, I'm, I'm talking about your thoughts on the Kwankwa So not going to be OB's running mate. Of course, we also hear the spokesman of the NNPP saying that uh, they are in talks with the Labour Party and Nigerians would be satisfied with the outcome. But I'm asking you, do you see a merger with the Labour Party and the NNPP uh, ahead of the 2023 elections? A replica of what happened yeah, in 2015? Yes. Yeah. There is a possibility, although it's, uh, it's still hazy right now, and the problem will be, will Kwak also want to be uh, or the, uh, Peter O'Bee's uh, vice? Will Peter O'Bee want to be Kwak also vice? That is where you have a long time. That is where you have a long time. You know, because Kwak also has declared for presidency already. Obi has declared for presidency already. Who, will, who is ready to subdue him if the other? That's the problem. Ever will come in here. Otherwise, I don't see a problem with the, a matter. And that would have been a very strong top force. Because you have two major political beliefs. Which is not, excuse me, which is not polarizing. So it would have been a major threat. The measure All right. to APC and PDP, but with anybody ready or anyone ready to sacrifice his own presidential ambition to bring this dream to fruition, that is the common law. Open our bank, Katara. Let's leave it at that. Will anybody be willing to sacrifice uh, his presidential ambition uh, to have that thought for us? in 2023, but do they need to sacrifice? I mean, do you really need to have um, this person's projecting themselves as candidate at the end of the day? Can they take the backstage, become kingmakers? That also should be another question. We're hoping to get answers, but that's the much we can take this morning on the front pages of an, uh, a national daily. Thank you so much, Upanabo and Kataria, for being part of The Breakfast. Thank you. Good morning, Mercy. Good morning, Nigerians. Yes, Upanabong is a public affairs analyst. We take a break now, but just before then, let's tell you what happened today in history. When we return, we'll head straight to our first major conversation right here. We're looking at the aftermath of the governorship elections in Nikita State. Of course, it's very critical to the 2023 elections. Stay with us.